Hey, what's up? So with Labco 21 finally in the game, you might ask yourself, what do I exactly do with her? That's where this video comes in. I'm gonna be teaching you her pros, cons, neutral, mix-ups, synergy, basic combos, and basically everything you need to know to perfect your very own Labco 21. So first let's start with her cons, because unlike her pros, her list of cons are actually pretty small. She has pretty subpar ground normals compared to some of the more belligerent characters in this game, Vegito. Poor level 3 Oki, okay, it's only plus 28 on hit, which doesn't really let you get the best of setups. You can't really float or do any left rights with it. Uh, a hard to convert A assist, which I think is pretty important to have this season because a lot of assists in this game just have tons of hits done. And she's a bit meter reliant. But there's ways to work around that with some good team building. And that's basically it for the cons. Now let's talk about the pros, and there's a lot of them. She has a strong full screen presence with her good key blast, really fast beam, and full screen lariat that goes through projectiles. A frame one anti-air option in her 2 and 4 H that leads to a ton of damage. You can do this both in the air and on the ground, and you can just murder someone for trying to approach you with the super dash or a jump in. Uh, she has a barrier to absorb attacks just like Android 18 to build a ton of meter. She has good corner carry and meter gain on her combos. She has a strong mix up game with her mid screen high lows, her cross up jump H, she has a solo comboable overhead and a few different command grabs. Uh, she has a super command grab that nerfs the opponent's damage permanently, which is uh, pretty, pretty ridiculous. Uh, she's good at fighting anchor characters, which is really important in this game with how prominent Limit Break is, with her ability to nerf the opponent's damage by landing her super command grab and just being able to prevent her from getting robbed in general. Uh, she's flexible in a lot of positions on many different teams. She has ways to open you up solo so she can be played like in a mid anchor position. She's really good using assists. Just honestly, you can just stick her in any position on your team and she's probably going to be effective. And on top of that, she is straightforward and easy to play. She has everything a strong character in Dragon Ball basically needs to have and how to use them is really straightforward. So let's talk a little bit about her neutral game. Android 21 lab coat Lab Coat 21? Labroid 21. I'm just gonna call her Lab Coat 21. We're just gonna go with that. All right, Lab Coat 21's neutral game consists of many strong full screen options that can both zone the opponent out and also let you approach. Let's start with her 5S and her Jump S Key Blast. They come out at a pretty standard speed and they can both be shot up to five times. This is always a really good option to have with any character in this game so her having access to both a strong air and ground key blast that's a good look her lariat is performed by pressing 236 lm or h the medium and ex versions of this lariat go full screen and they go through key blasts it's easy to use in tandem with an assist to gain frame advantage by just calling it after you make the opponent block the lariat and you can just get a really easy approach and get your offense going her Lariat, when done perfectly off the ground with a Tiger Knee input, can be minus two on block if done somewhat close, and even even or plus on block if spaced from really far. You can also instant air dash back and then do a Lariat right before landing, and you can also get this more advantageous block stun. You want to be careful though when using this Lariat attack because you can be 2H'd out of the Lariat. Then comes her beam, which for some reason is the fastest beam in the game, and it's also piercing? Why does she have this? It has an insane 14 frame startup and is a true block string from any of her medium or heavy buttons. And it can also be done in the air if you perfectly tiger knee it off the ground even. It can be minus three on block full screen, which is really, really safe for a beam, especially the fastest beam in the game. <laughs> in Sparking Blast, you can even go into this move gaplessly, block string into an empty vanish, and then go for high-low mix-ups. It's absolutely insane. If even with all these full screen options at your disposal, you're still struggling with your opponent's projectiles, you also have access to a barrier special that is practically identical to Android 18's done with 2-2-S. 
You just T-pose on your opponent and you build a ton of meter from it. And if you're able to land a successful barrier, you can special cancel into any of her specials, just like Android 18's. Or you can super cancel. You can be full screen and absorb a projectile and then cancel into her beam, which is really strong considering her beam is the fastest beam in the game and it is really good at punishing some of your opponent's projectile patterns. As you can imagine, you can also use the barrier defensively since it comes out in four frames, just like Android 18. You can use it in a lot of different defensive situations, but one of the most common ones is after blocking your opponent's vanish. When your opponent tries to take their turn after their vanish, you can barrier in this gap and cancel your barrier into a 2 and 4 h and it punishes most characters trying to press their offense after this. Your opponent basically has to try and call out your barrier by hard reading it with a dragon rush or waiting and punishing it. Speaking of 2 and 4 h can we just talk about how insanely busted this move is? Imagine if Super Saiyan Vegeta's air DP was combined with Gotenks Beyblade, and it led to an insanely high damage combo. This move is frame 1 head invul and can be used to punish super dashes from the air as well as dealing with one of the strongest mechanics in this game, Vanish Cancel. If your opponent ever hits you with a sparking blast, literally just up tech, and if they vanish cancel and try to do a jump light light, which most people usually do, you can just 2 and 4 H them. And if they vanish cancel and just block, you can just make them block your 2 and 4 H and you're plus. And you can just take your turn, call your assist, and get your offense going. In general, her anti-air options are some of the best out there, which in the context of Dragon Ball Fighters means you're pretty privileged. While her 2H might not be the best, not really reaching that far forward, especially compared to the original 21, her air to air buttons are very solid. Her jump M is very active and kind of reminds me of another move. Plus it's really good for jailing the opponent to the floor with the common air block string of jump M, jump L into jump H. Speaking of her jump L, this normal has a great hitbox, making it very viable for air to airs as well. You can use this to air to air the opponent at super jump height by canceling your jump LL into her 2 and 4 L and then call an assist and basically convert a air to air super jump situation into a high low 50 50 mix up. Her 5M also has a good active anti air hitbox while doubling as a decent mid screen poke. If you anti air the opponent with this move, it drags the opponent to the ground giving you a very easy combo and is a medium starter so it'll do a ton of damage. It kind of reminds me of some other characters. Be careful when whiffing this move though as it has a lot of whiff recovery. Her 5LL also has a deceptively far and high hitbox which makes it good to poke with and anti air. This button I would say is most likely her best ground poke overall in neutral due to how far it goes and how little whiff recovery it has compared to some of her medium buttons like her 5M and her 2M. Finally, we arrive at the super that is the absolute physical embodiment of Lab Coat 21. Everything about 21 is stuffed into this singular move. The super is 21 frame startup, it does 21 hits, it does 21, 21 damage, it buff Lab Coat 21's specials by 21% for the entirety of the match, and it nerfs the opponent's damage on the character you land this on by 21% permanently. I know people want to nerf some characters in this game, but Bandai was kind enough to give you the ability to nerf them yourself. All you gotta do is hit them with this super, and the opponent is gonna be real sad. This move is also a comeback denier as it nerfs the limit break 20% damage buff multiplicatively and not additively. Not only is the super very easy to combo into just by OTGing with it after 2 and 4 M, you can also tick throw the opponent with the super. Canceling any normal into the super will be a perfectly timed tick throw right outside of the throw protection and punish the opponent for mashing or reflecting during your staggers. It being a 21 frame startup makes it pretty hard to react to honestly, and the super flash only goes off if the grab lands. If you land this command grab in the corner, you also get a safe jump jump H that beats up tech and DPs, and is really cheap considering how good the corner carry is for her combos. Now it's time to talk about the mix, and this character has a lot of different mix-up options to choose from. 
Because of how far her 5L goes, you can actually use it to do a mid-screen super dash and do a 50-50 depending on your assist. She is also one of the only characters in this game that can do this off of a mid-screen super dash, so it's very privileged that she can. Her 2M also has an 8-frame startup, which is the exact same startup as Android 16's 2L. So you can also use this 2M in conjunction with this 5L for the high-low mix-up, and it's a medium starter, so it's going to do a ton of damage. She also has a slide 3H, which hits low, combined with her stomp move, which also hits low, which lets her do six lows in a singular block string, which is the most any character can do in this game, honestly. With this many lows at her disposal, it makes it really difficult to jump out of her pressure on defense and makes her super command grab just that more powerful. And on top of the super command grab, she also has a regular command grab. This command grab is a bit slower than the super command grab coming in at 24 frames, but it has the added bonus of stealing the opponent's health, stealing a flat 500 HP regardless of blue or yellow health. The next option is her cross-up instant overhead jump H, which you can perform point blank to the opponent. This is hella hard to block, and when looking for all the other options, it is very difficult to defend against when she has command grabs, lows, dragon rush. And not only that, the jump H is 11 frames, which is the same speed as a lot of jump mediums. On top of all these solo offensive options Labco21 has, she also has a comboable overhead in her 6H. The 6H is a little bit on the slower side, coming in at 27 frames, but it becomes much more apparent once you condition the opponent with her staggers, command grabs, cross-ups, and dragon rush, why it is strong. This move crushes lows and 2Hs and puts Labco21 airborne, almost making it look like you're about to do an instant air dash jump H. So it kind of hits as a same side option in ways. Her stagger game is also quite strong with all her lights and mediums being negative four on block, allowing you to backdash after them safely without your opponent being able to challenge. Also because her medium buttons are multi-hit, it allows you to react to guard cancels very easily with the 2H. And finally, let's talk about a little bit of her Sparking Blast offense. Because she can gaplessly string into her beam, she can vanish cancel afterwards and do some pretty strong cross-up and high-low pressure with it. She can also do a Jump S and land into a 5L, as her Jump S has no landing recovery, and you can mix this up with Jump S into Air Dash Jump L, or do Jump S into Land 5L. And as long as you sometimes check your opponent's super dash out of block stun, this is a really strong sparking option to do on offense. Now let's see a few of Labcoat21's basic combos. This guide isn't really meant to be an intricate combo guide, as I may make an extended combo guide later, but these combos will at least get you guys going. So here is a mid-screen combo that you can do with Labcoat21, and we're going to have the notation at the bottom of the video as well. Now here is a corner combo that you can do with Labco 21. Once again, this is just a basic combo, just to get you going. Now let's talk about Labco 21's team synergy and assists. Like I said at the beginning, I think she's a pretty flexible character to play in a lot of positions, but overall, I think her best position is in the second slot, as it gives her access to more meter to play with, so she can use her EX special moves that are really strong, and it also lets her have access to an assist at least. Labco21 actually has very unique synergy as far as ZBFZ goes, as you can Z change into her and OTG off of some special moves that you normally could not and get a full combo off of them. Just some examples would be Z Broly's command grab in the corner, Tien's TK EX chop, or SSJ4 Gogeta's EX axe kick. 
When it comes to choosing an assist to play with Labcode 21, you really can't go wrong with either a beam or beam-like assist like regular Android 21 A assist, or some kind of strike assist. These assists work really well in conjunction with Labcode 21 special moves like her beam, barrier, and her lariat. But I think one of the most important things when choosing an assist is making sure that the assist lets you get a mid-screen super dash high-low 50-50. Not all assists will allow for this as it depends on their block stun and pushback. So make sure to lab and find out which one works for your team. Now let's talk about Labcode 21's assists. And I think this topic is a little bit of a weird area when discussing this character. As I think the assists are pretty strong, they can feel a bit unconventional to use. So her A assist is kind of like Yamcha's assist, but just better in every way. Rest in peace, Yamcha. It is anti-key blast and is plus 40 on block and is 20 frame startup, which is really fast. It is a little bit difficult to convert off of though, which I think is gonna be people's biggest problem when using this character, as this will probably be everyone's go-to assist. Her next assist is her B assist, which is a barrier assist that is identical to Android 18's barrier assist. And depending on who you talk to, they'll either tell you that it is garbage or an absolutely godlike assist. I for one am kinda in the middle. I think depending on your character, you can definitely make good use of a barrier assist, but it's not for every character and it is definitely much less flexible than her A assist. And finally, for her last assist, which is her C assist that I don't really recommend most people use, but you know what, live your life. Uh, I don't really like C assist because of how long the cooldown is, but her C assist is a C beam, which in my opinion is at least the best set of assists when it comes to C assist, as it is piercing and it will convert into a full combo if you hit the beam anywhere on it. But you know, just watch out for that long cooldown. And that's it for the video. Thanks for watching. Overall right now, I think Labcode 21 is a super powerful character and is going to make a huge mark in the meta right now. I think she fights many problematic characters like Vegito, Super Saiyan Gogeta, Broly, and so on, with her anti key blast lariat and her really fast beam, as well as her many other options. Overall, I just think she fights the system mechanics really well, like Super Dash and Empty Vanish with her 2 and 4 H. She fights Limit Break really well by denying comebacks with her command grab super by nerfing their damage. And she just brings all these new variables to the table, making her a huge threat in Dragon Ball right now. Let me know what you think of Labcoat 21 and if you found this guide helpful in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more.